house followers. Today we are going to be playing with some resin. Um, of course, I'm using our two-part pour. So we do have two options. We have one from Envirotex and one from Color Pour. Now, it's just really going to come down to a preference. Unless you're doing something with food, um, this one does say that it is food safe. Um, but again, it's just, it's going to come down to what you would want to do and what your project is. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these aside. I want to talk about a few other things that you are going to need. So first off, I want to make sure you're working on a flat surface and that is covered. So I am just using a garbage bag here, but you can really use a silicone mat or anything else. Uh, if you are just getting started, I really suggest our color pour toolkit. So that will come with a nice clear um, plastic covering for your surface. It's also going to come with 10 of these little cups, um, which are basically like Dixie cups, but you can reuse these for multiple projects. And then it comes with stir sticks, tweezers, and of course, two pairs of gloves. So gloves are very important. You want to be protecting your hands because this can get very sticky. Um, if you are not wanting or looking at that kit, again, Dixie cups are going to work great or these popsicle sticks work great as well to stir everything up. Um, another thing that you, I would recommend you have is some type of measuring cup. So one thing about the two part pours is it's very important that they are equal parts. And one thing I love about this cup from Envirotex is it has the measurements clearly labeled for you and you can get those equal parts. So one thing I do recommend is having three cups. So I tend to have one that has an R and an H and I measure out both my resin and hardener in two different cups and then I combine them into one. Um, again, keeping my popsicle sticks separate and not interchangeable. So when I'm done using these, I can just wipe it out with a paper towel um, and get it nice and clean and keep using it for future projects. Um, when you are done, I would like to point out you can clearly, you can easily save all your things as usually whatever my stir stick is. I kind of leave it below and I just flip my cup upside down, let it drain there as all my projects are hardening and then I can just pull out the resin in the end. Um, another thing I find very important is make sure you are keeping your hair pulled up if you have any long hair. You don't want to get any resin and that you're in a well-ventilated area. Resin does have a very strong smell, especially if you are using a heat gun, which I highly recommend. So this heat gun is going to help pop any of those little pesky bubbles that you get in the resin along with, it's going to help you kind of move your resin a little bit. So... Um, I have one from American Craft and I love using this when I'm trying to get those waves going. Speaking of waves, I do like to point out we do have this fun little thing called Resi Blast. The bottle is a bit spendy, but you guys, the cells this creates is amazing. Um, if you've struggled in getting your waves, this is going to help you a bunch. Um, and all you need is a couple drops in one of these small little Dixie cups and you can keep using this for multiple, multiple projects. Now, one thing about the resin I do like to point out on the Envirotex ones, if you are going to be using this for other projects and not all in the one day, is this one does have a white cap for your white font, which is your resin, and this has a black cap for your black font. This is awesome because you're not putting the wrong cap on your wrong container and sealing it shut. Um, once that resin and that hardener interact, it, it cures right away. Well, within 24 hours. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and pull our project in and go ahead and get started. Okay, for today's resin pour, we are going to be making a clock. So I went ahead and got our gallery clock board. So this already has this hole in there and it's big enough that I could go ahead and put my clock piece in it. But we're going to make it a little more fancy and again resin pour on it. First things first though is I want to make sure that I'm not seeing any wood come through on my resin board. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover it in a acrylic 
paint that's white. So any brand that's your favorite will work. Um, I am using that Ram coat today, but it just needs to be a white. So you guys, you can paint this with, again, any background color that you want. So happened today, I am gonna cover most of this with a white colored resin, but even if I wasn't, if this was gonna be all purple or um, maybe it's all blue, I would, I could still paint this white. It's actually gonna make my color more vibrant. But again, that's just a preference. You could easily paint this um, any background color that you want, but white tends to be a safe bet because it makes all that color really um, pop off of it. So we're gonna go ahead and let this dry. Once it's fully dry, we'll come back and we'll start our resin. Okay, now my surface is dry, you guys. I did go ahead, I put a cup in the center and I have that cup facing up because I'm not gonna put anything in the center. I'm just gonna let the resin drain. Um, and then I'll come in afterwards and I'll clean that hole out so I can put my um, clock piece in. Okay, to start off with you guys. So I have a couple colors here because I'm not fully sure what I want to do. But um, I have a marine blue. Again, this is an acrylic ink. Um, so you want to make sure you want to shake it up every time before you use it because the pigment does settle to the bottom. But I'm gonna use this for a blue that I think I'm gonna like run across through the center. Um, I do have some Resi Blask. Possibly gonna put that in the blue. Um, and then I have two silvers here. So I have one of our Pearlex powders. This is an um, antique silver. Let's see if you can see it on there. And then I do have a metallic silver acrylic paint. Um, I'm just not thinking I'm gonna fully love this, so we're gonna try it out in a little container and see what the color looks like. So I will use one of those two as my silvers. And then majority of it, we're gonna go ahead and do white, and I'm gonna do that with one of those acrylic inks as well. So I'm hoping I'm only gonna need about three ounces of both the hardener and resin for this. So I already have it all measured out um, and I just gotta go ahead and mix them and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so my resin is all mixed. Um, again, I tend to mix really quickly, which I know is not good. Um, so I have all these bubbles, but we're gonna make sure we get those all popped. But when you mix your hardener and your resin together, you wanna go slow. Make sure you're getting all the sides, the bottoms. It'll kind of get milky and then it'll really clear up. Um, again, I'm just reinforcing. I really suggest having two cups. You can mark one of your measuring cups with an H and one with an R so that you know it's only for hardener and resin and then the other one's for resin because after this, you can go ahead and clean it and you can reuse it. So I would just throw away my popsicle stick and I'd take a paper towel and wipe it out. And then I, t I like to go in with a Lysol wipe and then a paper towel again. And then I can reuse this for my next project along with the resin cut. And having them separated before you mix them is really important so that we're making sure we're getting equal parts. Um, any two part pour resin, you wanna make sure you're getting equal parts. Otherwise it will be sticky and you'll have to re-pour on top of it. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my cups up here because I'm gonna do a blue. So let's pour some blue into here. And then we wanna do a little tester on the silver. So we're gonna just put a little bit in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put a good chunk in here because I wanna do white, right? Okay, so I'm gonna come in with first that blue. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a whole little dauber of this blue. I might go ahead and do a little bit more. And then let's mix that all up. So 
So we're mixing the blue and the resin, and this is an acrylic ink. And I just did a little over a dauber. Ooh, look how pretty that blue is. Okay. And then again, we're gonna do white in that, this cup right here, cause we wanna try to cover the board majority in white. And then we'll mix that up. And since we're working with Envirotex today, we do have, today I do have about 30 minutes to work with my resin before it starts being too tough to handle. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and just mix a little bit of this into that um, cup that we have for the silver. I have a feeling this powder is gonna be a little too dark, but we'll see. Ooh, it's so gorgeous though. Look at how pretty that is. Okay, let's go ahead and just mix a little bit of the acrylic paint and see which we like better. So just a little bit. And then I'm going to mix that right in. Hmm. I don't know, they're both so beautiful. I think I'm actually, oh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with the acrylic ink one, but we're just gonna go ahead and mix this together and add a little bit more resin. We're gonna kind of create our own, both of, the best of both worlds. Okay, so let's go ahead and just pour some more resin in this cup. I don't need much of it. And let's mix it all together. So beautiful. Oh, that's a really pretty color. Okay, you guys. So now we're ready. Let's cover a little bit with white. And I'm gonna use that popsicle stick to spread it out. I could always use my fingers if I wanted to. Okay, now I'm gonna pour on the other side. And again, I'm just spreading the resin out. Okay, let's kind of come in here with the blue. And I'm just gonna go right across. I'm gonna spread it out a little bit. And then I am gonna put a little bit of Resi Blast into, just one drop, into that silver. And we're gonna mix that all in. So mix it, mix it really good. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna put a little bit of clear between the blue and 
then we'll put the silver on the opposite side and then we'll come in with our heat gun. And all the way along. Okay. So now I'm gonna come in with that heat gun. And I'm just gonna kind of zhuzh the resin. Also, I'm gonna be popping bubbles when I do this. You don't want to leave your heat gun in one spot for too long, you guys, because then you could burn the resin. You're going to want to see that. Let's kind of see what this does. See all the cells that are starting to form? So we're just gonna move, try to move this up a little bit. Just move this. I'm gonna use my fingers, kind of help the resin along. Some of the holes I don't have covered yet. I'm loving the way this is turning out. Let's just kind of help it up. Help the resin to the edge here. What I'm doing is I'm going along. There's some parts of my board that did not get covered with resin yet. And just like paint pouring, I want to kind of move the resin to those spots so then it's going to be able to flow a lot better. So I'm going to come in with that heat gun again. Kind of pop some of the bubbles in this white. I'm just going to keep zhuzhing the resin up. Now, if I wanted to, I could kind of come back in with some more of that silver and kind of just drizzle it along down the center. So this isn't quite as blue. I could also, I see there's a lot less silver down along here. So I could add a little bit more silver and then come in with that heat gun. looking so good you guys. I'm gonna try to put a little bit more white up here because I don't quite like how much silver is kind of blending up here. So if I can put a tad more white I think I'll kind of tone it down a tad. Kind of mix them just a tad up there and I'll come back in with that heat gun. 
I love putting the silver through here. It really is so it's showing really good cells and just kind of is like um getting gold or silver leafed throughout this blue. Now I'm gonna have more bubbles. I can already see some coming up. So throughout this drying in the next 30 minutes, every 10 minutes, I'm gonna be coming in and just running my heat gun across the surface and popping any bubbles that have come up. Um, if you have any bubbles that are being really difficult, you can come in with a toothpick and just pop it. gonna pop there's a couple I just can't get so I'm just gonna come in and pop them by hand okay just gonna come in once more with that heat gun So like I said, I'm gonna be coming in every 10 minutes, um, 15 minutes and making sure I'm getting all my bubbles popped on this project. Also you guys, I do wanna make sure my edges are getting covered here. So if there's any of the right color down below, I am trying to scoop that up. Just kinda of go around the edge of this uh, clock because I wanna make sure the resin is fully dripped on the edges and kind of just like I was doing with the surface. If there's no resin there, sometimes it has a hard time kind of sliding over. So I'm just kind of helping it along. Make sure I do my lighter color first so that I'm not mixing up all that blue. Okay. All right, you guys, I'm really excited how this turned out. Um, so we're gonna let it dry. I'm gonna make sure I flip over all of my cups just upside down and I usually put the popsicle stick below it so that um, it will all dry there and I can just pull it out much easier. And then in 24 hours, we'll see how this looks and we'll add the clock pieces. Okay, you guys, it is all dry, and look at how beautiful that is. I'm really excited to put this one up. Um, I do wanna go ahead, I did spray paint like all my letters and my um, arms on my clock because I wanted them to be silver and not gold on my clock. But that's just a personal preference. And then I did go ahead and I, um, took all of the little pieces off of this clock piece, except for the rubber piece. You wanna put the rubber piece right back on there. And we're gonna go ahead and put the letters on with UV resin. When I take these numbers off, sometimes they don't come off cleanly. So if that's the case, I do have some, like this one, I have some flush cutters from our beading department just to go ahead and get rid of any of that extra. So I'm just gonna pull all of these off and then I'll clean them all up. I'm really excited about this, you guys. This is gonna look so awesome up on the walls. Okay. And we are just gonna kind of place these where they should go and then we'll go along and um, do the UV resin. So clip, clip, clip. Let's get these all cleaned up. I want all of them nice and flush as I can be. Okay, and it looks like the rest are good. So we're gonna start with 
placing our 12 up above. And I want it to be kind of down a little bit. Great way to line this up is gonna be using a ruler. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a ruler and I'm gonna put my number right I think I'm going to line it up right in the center and just put the one letter up above for 12 Okay. So I got my 12 and 6 in line. And we're going to do the same thing with our 3. Oops. Same thing with our 3 and our 9. Okay, make sure their bottoms are lined up. Okay, that is lined up. And now we're going to go across and do all of our other numbers the best we can. Okay. One and seven. Let's do our eight and two. And I'm just kind of here what I'm doing. I'm trying to put it somewhere in the half inch mark. Kind of in between, just keeping it lined up. I'll check my distance from the edge. So it looks like I need to go a little bit more. So let's try that again. Okay, and we're going to do the 4 and the 10. Let's get the 10 in there. Okay. And then our last one, the five and the 11. Oops. Okay, I think that looks good, you guys. So I'm gonna come in with that UV resin and I'm gonna start with my lower ones first and work my way up. So I have my light all ready to go and I'm gonna start with six. And I'm using the Color Pour Resin, the UV resin. And we're just gonna lift this up and just, oops. You don't need a lot, just a little. It could be easier to go ahead and put it down on a silicone mat and kind of work your way around on your piece. Okay. And then I'm just gonna bring the light over it. 
and that should start a minute timer. Now, if I really wanted to, I could go ahead and do another layer of resin once this is done so that the numbers are fully covered, but that's just a preference. Um, I could leave it how it is and be perfectly happy with it. Um, just comes down to how rough you are on things, how you'd want to dust. Um, another layer of resin is really going to secure these letters so that they're not going to have any wear tear on them. I do recommend either gluing them down or doing the UV resin because um, they won't move on you for when you do pour any resin. And that's all set. So let's go to the next letter or number. Okay, so just a tad, you don't need that much. Again, if you're not comfortable squeezing the bottle just straight onto the number, you can easily um, just have like a little paintbrush and paint it on. But remember, you don't want to keep your resin near the light because it will cure it. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring the light over. And every time I press up, that's a minute. So if I didn't think it was cured and didn't trust it, I could go ahead and press it again and it would um, just run the light again and cure it. But a minute should do. And I am going to go ahead and finish the rest of these letters off camera, and then we'll put the um, clock piece in and you can see how it runs. Okay, the letters are all nicely UV resin down. So we're gonna go ahead and put this piece in. So again, I have the rubber piece that goes right on there. And we're gonna pull it right up the center. And then you're gonna come in with this flat washer. And then you're gonna use the spinning washer on next. And we're just gonna spin that all the way down. Curing it nice and tightly, so. That's good to go. Now, to put these on. So now you have three different hands. You, This is gonna be the last one we put on, so I'm gonna set it to the side. And then you have these two other ones. Um, they are different sizes, but I want to point out the um, the holes on them are also different and that's gonna be how you know what you want to put on. So we're gonna go ahead and put this one on first. And you wanna, you wanna go ahead and push it down where it gets nice and tight on there because this one is gonna help spin and will move that hand. This does have the flat edges. It's not a perfect circle. So you have to line it up just right on the bolt. We have one more tiny washer, which we're gonna put on next, just to secure it. And then our second hand. It has a little hole on it and you just push it right in the center. And we're good to go. All you have to do is put a battery into the back of this and it will start working how fun and beautiful is that you guys thank you guys for following and happy crafting mm -hmm.